won't find a better beach house than this in the whole North Shore. Sort of damp, isn't it? Well, only in this room. It's near the water. I just love it. Oh, and don't forget, Miss Hollister, all this charming furniture goes with the house. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Hollister, you, you'll love it here all weekend. It's a very short drive, too. Oh, yeah, to get you away from the crowded city. It's only an hour's drive from 42nd Street. 43rd Street is an hour's drive from 42nd Street. <laughs> uh, look, I have to return these keys next door. Uh, why don't you folks just uh, stay here and uh, think it over? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> You don't like this house. I do like it, but I can't let him know I like it. You got too carried away. We won't be able to bargain with him. You must act like we can't afford it. Can we afford it? No. <laughs> That'll make my acting much easier. <laughs> Listen, Dick, I think this house would be a saving. We always go away for four or five weekends anyway. Yes, well, we go to Cape Cod. It doesn't cost us anything. We stay with Bert and Myra. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could have Bert and Myra come and stay with us? What for? I hate Bert and Myra. <laughs> you just don't like this house. I do like it, but it takes money. I won't be making any more money tomorrow than I am today. The only way we can afford this house is if you cut down on your spending somewhere. Oh, honey, I can do that, I promise. All right, if you can, I'll send Mr. Archer a down payment at the end of the week. Thank you. Are you going to be happy in this house? Yes, if it makes you happy. I can only be happy if you're happy. You have to be happy in order for me to be happy. Yeah. Good. I'll be happy as long as I know you're happy. Good. I can only really be happy if I know you're happy because you're happy, not because I'm happy. One of us has to make a sacrifice and be happy first. I'll be happy to do that. Good. If it makes you happy. What have you two decided? That we're happy. Hi, Paula. Oh, honey, listen. I've got everything figured out. I've got a new system and a new budget so that we can save all the money we need to buy the beach house. Yes, I had a nice day. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, I want to show you something. Come over here. Have you ever heard of the envelope system? Is there anything like the pill? <laughs> System, you take all the money you have and put it in the envelopes. One for rent, one for cleaning, one for gas and electric, one for laundry, and this is the one for food. For instance, at the first of the month, you put all the money you need in the envelope for food, and then, when you run out, that's it. What do you do if you get hungry? Lick the flat? All right, all right. How much money do we have for food? This morning, we had $20. Uh, oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. What do you mean we had? Well, I had to take money from the food envelope to put into the cleaning envelope. <laughs> well, wh well why, why did you take the... I had to pay back the cleaning envelope, the money that I had borrowed from the gas and the electric envelope. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't make me go through all the envelopes. <laughs> Where did you spend the money? I spent it all on envelopes. <laughs> This is not going to work. It is going to work. You simply have to stop spending money on things I don't have envelopes for. What do you mean? Here is a bill from Dr. Melvin Krillman for $75. Who is he? That's Oscar's doctor. I went there for my annual checkup. Your annual checkup? Yeah, I get one every five years. Dick, what is this? $25 to the cartoonist relief home. Oh, yes, that's a pledge. That must go out right away. Right. This is the last one. $175 to your lawyer. That's for making up my will. Your what? They thought it was time I had a will. Your lawyers or Dr. Melvin Krillman? The lawyers? What do you mean, Dr. Melvin Krillman? Well, first of all, you go for your annual checkup, and then you have a will drawn up. Why? Well, they said it's time that someone my age should have a will. Oh. Dick, there's something you're not telling me. What? <laughs> Dr. Melvin Krillman told you some bad news, and you're not telling me what it is. The only bad news that Dr. Melvin Krillman told me was $75. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. Just because I had a will drawn up doesn't mean that I'm dying. If you're lying, I'll find out. <laughs> Paula, 
Paula, don't be silly. Would I buy a beach house if I thought I wasn't going to be around to enjoy it? Yes, you would. I would? Yes, you would. You would want me to have a nice place to live in in case anything happened to you because you're a sweet, kind, and considerate person. I can't argue with that. <laughs> Tell me what it is you're suffering from. Paula, look, you have a very healthy imagination and it's starting to make me sick. And I'm not, so don't make me. <laughs> believe me, there's nothing the matter with me. All right, I believe you. Yes. I am being silly. I mean, how could I possibly think there was anything wrong with you when you're so obviously healthy? <laughs> Hello? Is this Dr. Melvin Krillman's office? This is Richard Hollister's wife. Paula. I've enjoyed Paula. talking to you, Florence, but I have to hang up now. Say hello to the two kids and Steve for us, will you? I'm so glad that your mother's feeling better. Yeah, we'll write. Bye-bye. Who is that? Nobody you know. Nobody I know. Do you know Steve and the Florence? No. Good. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, I'll tell her. Mm-hmm. Bye. Steve and Florence? Right. And Steve and Flo want to let you know that Dr. Melvin Krillman is on his boat fishing. He won't be back until the end of the week. <laughs> Paula, the only thing the matter with me is that I'm trying to be practical. That's why I have life insurance, that's why I have an annual checkup, and that's why I had a will. Because it's the logical, mature, intelligent thing to do. If I were going to drop... Don't say that! <laughs> all right, all right. If I were going to, um, shuffle off... <laughs> I, I would let you know, so we could work everything out. I'm only doing this, so if something does happen to me, you'll be well taken care of. Until you remarry. <laughs> remarry? I don't want to remarry. But you don't love me, do you? Well, of course I love you. Would I care what happened to you if I didn't love you? I don't care what you care. I don't want to remarry anyone. Paula, if I shuffle off... <laughs> You'll, you'll be all alone. You'll need someone. All right, I'll buy a big dog. <laughs> but you can't talk to a big dog. I'll buy a dog and a parrot. Paula, if you want me to rest in peace, you'll get married. <laughs> Think of yourself. Paula, all I'm saying is that if something should ever happen to me, I would like to know that someday you would remarry. Look, if I say yes, can we end this discussion? Yes. Okay. When the time comes, I will remarry. I will remarry whomever you want me to. No, 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 no. It, <laughs> it, it's not who I want, it's who you want. You see, you're the one who's getting married. Honey, I don't want to marry anybody you don't like. I won't even be here. All right, I'll marry one of your friends. No, you can't do that. Most of my friends are already married. Yes, they are. Harry. Harry's not married. I'll marry Harry. Marry Harry? <laughs> <laughs> you can't be serious. Why not? You, are, you, you have nothing in common. We both like you. What are you two going to do? Sit around the rest of your lives reminiscing about the good old days with Dick? <laughs> Besides, Harry is a fireman. He could never support you in the manner to which you are accustomed. He can with your insurance money. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly come a long way from a dog and a parrot. Hey, Paula, oh, honey, I'll see you. Uh, you have to have a small uh, frying pan. Uh, oh, hi, Dick. Couldn't wait for me to shuffle off, could you? <laughs> shuffle off? I, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Paula has got me crazy. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you later, Dick. What, uh, what was all that about? Dick objects to you and me getting married. Oh, what? <laughs> what? He's asked that I remarry when the time comes. When what time comes? Dick went to get his annual checkup at the doctor. Huh? And a few days later, he went to his lawyer to draw up a will. Oh, you mean you think he's get... Oh! Paula, that, that's not possible. I don't believe that. I'm afraid it's true. You have to be sure. Did you talk to the doctor? No, I can't reach him. He's out of town. You see? Oh, 
Paula, this is crazy. This is, this is, this is insane. Just because Dick got a checkup and a will doesn't mean... I mean, after all, you know, Dick is... He, I mean, every day you read... How long has he got? <laughs> Look, this is, this is ridiculous. Now you've got me doing it. You can't possibly know anything until you talk to this doctor. Harry, he talked to me about my remarrying. Oh, Harry, yes. Harry, what am I going to do? You have to be strong, Paula. Dick would have wanted it that way. <laughs> oh, Harry. Oh, Paula. You could have at least waited until I shuffled off. You have to keep fighting, Dick. We're going to go to other doctors. Dick, we're going to find a specialist. You can't just give up on this thing. Look at Ben Gazzara. You've been fooling around with his wife, too? He doesn't believe me either, huh? What are you doing here? Don't you feel well? Honey, I told you, you have nothing to worry. <laughs> now, does that feel like a man with one lip in the grave? <laughs> Honey, I just came back to remind you about those checks. Remember, one has to go to the beach house and one has to go to the cartoonist relief home. Remember, you've got to send them out today. I'll send them out. Okay. Tying up the loose ends, huh? <laughs> I think it over, Paula. This man will drive you crazy. Mom and Dad, lovely. Oscar, what are you doing here? I haven't been able to sleep a wink since you told me the tragic news. Oscar, how sweet, but I only told you an hour ago. <laughs> I think I found a solution how we can get in touch with Dr. Krillman. Come, I'll show you. Surprise. Well, ah! Condors! Condors, they're not condors. They're pigeons. You be careful of them, they go for your eyes. Oh, will you stop it, you daffy tit, and go back and fix that door? Oscar, what are you going to do with these pigeons? Oh, Paula, these are not your everyday, ordinary pigeons. These are Dr. Croman's homing pigeons. I just went over to his apartment to pick them up. Doesn't that mean they'll fly right back to his apartment? Don't be silly. They know he's not home. <laughs> Besides, these pigeons are trained to fly right to his boat. Now, all we have to do is write a note, tie it onto one of these little birds, and tell the doctor to contact you immediately. Oscar, there must be an easier way to reach Dr. Krillman than that. Sure there is. Ship to shore telephone, but the lines are tied up for the next eight hours. Oh, believe me, Paul, let's give it a try. It's worth it. Now, all I need is some stationery. Okay. Okay, I'll get some. Remember, Darcy, if you don't get through, it's a rotisserie for you. <laughs> Oscar, I've only got these Christmas cards. Well, that's perfect. I forgot to send one to the doctor last year anyway. <laughs> Just add a little note. Please contact Mrs. Hollister upon arrival of Bird. P.S. Merry Christmas. <laughs> you put that in the envelope while I get Garcia out, Paula. Okay. Thank you. All right, Garcia. Here it comes, the moment of truth. Steady. Oscar, don't you think this envelope is going to be too heavy for that little bird? Don't be silly. Look at the strength in that bird. Those staunch little ankles. <laughs> if he hadn't taken up flying, he'd make a great little ice skater. <laughs> See how anxious he is? Here we go, Garcia. Now remember, I want you to think boat. Boat. B-O-A-T, Dr. Krillman's boat. Skyward, skyward. Up into the boom. Ah. He's down. I can't look. Oh, wait, wait. He, he's all right. He's just dazed. He's shaking his head a little. What's he doing now? He's staggering up the street. <laughs> he's either a slow start or he's going to walk to that boat. No. no, there he goes. He's airborne. Hey. Hello, Harry. Hi, What's going on? Oh, I gave my bird. Well, he's not really my bird. He's Dr. Tillman's homing pigeon. I just sent him out after Dr. Tillman's boat. Well, why didn't you call him ship to shore? I tried. I tried, Harry. But the lines are tied up for the next eight hours. Well, tell him it's the fire department and it's an emergency. I'll get through to that boat. You'll never get that call through, Harry. It's an unlisted boat. <laughs> Come on, let me in. Oh, Dick, just a second. 
careful. Well, don't let him in until I get Shirley in the closet. Paula, Mr. Hollister, you'll have to wait a second. I'm working on your door. All right, everybody, please, please try to look cheerful. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Hollister. Good morning. It seems that of all the members of the Cartoonist Guild, I have been selected to cut the ribbon dedicating the new wing of the Cartoonist Relief Home. Yeah, that's great. Uh, that's great. Uh, it's, it's just a little ribbon. It's... Honey, where are you going? Well, I'm going into the bedroom to change. Oh, you got it. Well, that's great, Dick. <laughs> you want to hear something else? I got to be there in an hour. You've been a wonderful, wonderful audience. Well, that confirms it. That confirms what? You heard, Dick. The cartoonist relief home asked him to dedicate the wing. That means they're saying goodbye. Oh. Paul, don't be silly, though. Why, well, there could be a hundred other reasons. I'll get it. Mr. Hollister, resident? Right you are. Mr. Archer? Uh, yes, hello, Mr. Hollister. Mr. North. How do you do, sir? I sent your check to you yesterday. Yes, I know, Mr. Hollister. That's why I'm here. Uh, here it is. I'm sorry, Mr. Hollister, but you can't buy a beach house for only $25 down. <laughs> I made the check after $2,500 to somebody. Well, you didn't send it to me. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Hollister, but I'll have to put that house back on the market. Mr. Archer, won't you take this check as good faith money? Mrs. Hollister. $25 won't keep the faith. <laughs> I, I don't understand. I made out two checks, one for $2,500 to Mr. Archer and one to the cartoonist relief home for $2,500. Oscar, I've contributed $2,500 to charity. Paula, how could you have mixed up the checks? I don't know. I, I was upset over Dick. Look at that. The ink is, is smeared. Those are teardrops. I was crying when I made out the checks. Yes, I often do that. $500 for the cartoonist relief home. Oscar, maybe that's why they ask him to dedicate the wing. Of course, it's got to be the reason. I knew I'd think of it. <laughs> Listen, if Harry doesn't get that call through, I'd better get another pigeon ready. Okay. Call her. Well, I thought I'd take a few practice snips. <laughs> I never cut a ribbon before. Here they are. <laughs> What's that? Uh, somebody is banging on the pipe. With a pigeon? <laughs> mature adult for me? Yeah, I think so. Hello, Scarlet. Come on, out of the closet. <laughs> now, there must be a reason why you were standing in my closet doing bird sounds. Oh, yeah? Let's hear it. <laughs> Paula! Paula, I did it! I got through to the boat! The call is coming through on your phone! What boat and what phone? Now, you never heard the you never heard the, the story of the old man and the phony boat. I don't. Uh... I didn't think you would. <laughs> Paula. I, I, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Mr. Birdman. <laughs> well, I don't know what he's talking about. You? Don't ask me. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Stephen Florence. Hello. Oh, yes. Yes, Dr. Krillman, this is Dick Hollister. I'm so sorry to disturb you. Will you please put my wife's mind at ease and tell her how long I've got to live? Tuesday. Oh, you'll be back on Tuesday. Will you tell her just a moment? Dr. Krillman? Yes, I, I was upset. Oh. I see. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Thank you. You've really put my mind at ease. Thank you. Oh, listen, did you get our Christmas card? <laughs> Never mind. Hi, <laughs> 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 
Are you happy now? Uh-huh. Come here. Now, if you don't mind, we'd like to be alone. You better go, Harry. Oh, oh me too. Oh, I, oh, oh yes, yes, oh, yes, I see. Well, it looks like it's you and me, Shirley. <laughs> yeah, let's go over to the park and we'll feed the people. You know, they didn't ask you to dedicate the wing because you were dying. Oh, I know. It's because of all the work I've done for the relief home. And your wonderful contribution. <laughs> no, no. One guy gave over $300. They didn't ask him to cut the ribbon. <laughs> I only gave 25 <laughs> Honey, you gave more than 25 <laughs> How much more? <clears throat> that much more. How much? First of all, I was very upset when I thought that you were shuffling off. How much? I, I was so upset when I was making out the checks, I added a few extra zeros. How much? I, I knew you were going to scream and yell and rant and rage, and I deserve How much? $2,500. <laughs> Taking it really well. 